Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our fourth installment of the Virtual Assistance Program. And today's topic is all about email handling and customer management. Now, the first question I want to actually ask to you guys is, how do you perceive email management? How exactly do you um, look at your emails? How do you organize your emails? What's your process? Do you star your emails? Do you segment them into labels? You know, I want to understand more clearly um, as to how you as a freelancer or as an aspiring entrepreneur smartly use emails to be able to have a more organized process of dealing with things because apparently you can't manage something uh, some someone else's job if you yourself can't actually manage your own processes right so in today's topic we're going to be talking about um these particular objectives number one um let's talk about email handling color ma calendar management jobs the skill sets that are required the machine or the equipment and all those kinds of things the basics and then let's talk about the first steps that you needed to actually uh, do or execute to be able to launch a career out of email management i wanted to actually really ask as well is this a separate job of a task or you know is it really a is there really a job that's specific to email handling alone or is it just a component of a virtual assistant's job and then we're going to be talking about the one click rule of a virtual assistant how you're not allowed to actually do other things aside from doing the uh, basics which is like um, read and then archive categorize things like that and then let's share some best practices like additional ninja steps in email handling and then faqs okay so the first thing we're going to actually talk about is um, email handling or calendar management jobs now the most important thing that you have to actually understand before you can launch an e a career in email handling is you need to have communication skills apparently before you even acquire the job you already are showing your email writing skills right because when you created that first touch point email you were already giving your client or potential client that first impression and i would actually say imagine if i was the potential client i could just actually say that this person is uh, th this person possesses good writing skills or good communication skills. So I'm probably going to shortlist this person. And then, um, so communication skills is everything. You know, that's the first interaction that you have with your client. And you should be able to actually have that before you can manage, manage someone else's e email. Because if your client is telling you that you could reply to his clients, then... Um, there has to be a level of trust in there that you also know how to communicate in the language that your client would want to do so okay and then secondly is email management of course the basics are there right like you should be able if you're using Gmail if you guys are using um, Outlook or um, any other you know, Yahoo Mail any other email platform then you should be familiar with these things but it's not just about having an account it's also about having that um knowledge on how to actually organize it how do you actually create calendars how do you share calendars with someone else or how do you um schedule a meeting with uh, a certain client how do you organize um your tasks into different labels or how do you actually uh, start certain emails and prioritize certain emails over others so you should be able to know them and then lastly you should also have the skill for calendar scheduling because that's a very crucial um, component of have of being a virtual assistant is to really organize the meetings of your client and um, yeah making sure that you are on top of the schedule that your client is supposed to attend and should really know about 
Now, equipment-wise, uh, standard, it's desktop or laptop. You need to be able to have a machine to perform this job. A mobile phone uh, should be necessary, especially as a backup. Because if your desktop is going to fail, at least you can still respond using your, la your mobile phone. But you have to be very careful because uh, the interface of responding from your Google, uh, from your mobile phone is different from responding from a laptop computer. So you have to really understand the dichotomy of uh, the dichotomy between these two things. And then lastly is the fast internet. Of course, um, there are certain uh, cases where in internet really factors in uh, when it comes to um, email handling. Um, on my personal case, I really hate it when I'm attaching a lot of files and I couldn't send it through uh, bec just because I have a very slow internet connection. So that's really very annoying. And then let's talk about software, right? So the software that we're using is the email. So the most popular one is Gmail. It's under the G, G Suite, but there's a there are other options. There's Microsoft, there's AWS, there is... Um, uh, Yahoo Mail, you know, um, and then also the emails that the customized emails that you can have in your company. So, um, for example, uh, you know that name at yourcompany.com. So that's uh, that's something that you can actually use. Um, but of course, that's housed in your in a certain other email management platform. Like um, you can you can still use uh, Gmail as the back end for hosting that. And then uh, calendar, of course, it could be an iCal or it could be a Google Calendar. And then office productivity tools or anything else that, that is prescribed by your clients. Now, what's the first step when handling um, your email, the email management uh, tasks or job that is required from you, right? So the first question is, um, if your client asks you to manage his email the very first thing that you have to do is to set up appropriate questions between your clients and yourself so let us say you positioned yourself um, in the context of um, a virtual assistant and then you're only offering email management as a service so the very first thing that you have to do is to level off the expectations like uh, what is the what is the scope of the service, uh, what exactly will have to be delivered, how much can I actually go around your email, can I actually delete things, can I archive some of the posts, can I reply to important clients, or can I actually just start speaking engagements, that kind of leveling off that has to be really uh, prioritized as the very first thing that you have to actually do. The second thing would be to get your clients log in credentials because obviously you can't be we won't be able to log in unless it's shared huh? so there is a process of sharing your sharing someone's email to another person so you can actually find that in settings so you can access you can add a collaborator and then you can also customize the level of access that this person is going to get and then thirdly, log in to see what kind of situation you're dealing with. So um, is, is this client a popular person? So maybe you're expecting like hundreds of emails in one day. Or another question is that, is this client of yours um, in the industry for more than 10 years already? So let's say, oh, this person is a digital marketing professional. He's a top video advertiser but he's been in the industry for more than 10 years and he's asking me to clean up his entire decade email. So that's a low, that huge workload, you know, and you really have to create a process to be able to, you know, employ this shotgun method. That I'm going to do this and then bang, it's one down. And then second thing and then third thing. And then fourthly, check out inbox, labels, folders, sub labels, and always zoom out you know that's always one thing that i actually say you see things right in front of you you have to zoom out again and look into what else can i actually do do i need to organize things this way or do i actually sort things out differently 
um, do I need to create new folders or do I actually color certain folders? You know, those kinds of questions. And then conduct a Skype call with your client. Once you're down listed, uh, you're, you're, you're done listing all of the questions that you have in mind uh, when you did all the audits beforehand. And then in this Skype call, by the way, you want to make sure that you're able to throw all the possible questions that cracks up along the way and you're just really you know uh, that's an opportunity for you so there's just not going to be a lot of a turnaround you know so make use of that opportunity to ask all the questions possible i would suggest that you actually list down all the questions so it's just going to be one interaction and then lastly is to decide how far back your clients wants to keep emails in archives so do you want does this client want things to be archived um, for those three months old, you know, or like one year old emails and things like that? Okay, so one popular um, digital marketing figure in the Philippines, but he's not a Filipino, is Chris Ducker. And he always gives tips on email management. And this is one of the articles that I think you guys should actually check out. Going virtual, how to work with a virtual assistant to manage your email. So um, he actually bro uh, he broke down a lot of the steps here for you guys to understand how to really take off an email management virtual assistant job. You know, So I really suggest that you... Uh, take this message into heart, look up this article in the internet, and uh, check out the examples that were actually in there. Uh, look at it one by one to see if you're able to actually understand them and then make it like a Bible for you guys before you actually execute your email management tasks. So here's the one-click rule in email handling according to Chris Ducker. Um, number one is to reply. And then number two is delete and three is archive and you shouldn't be doing anything else like reply delete archive reply delete archive that's just it and as a virtual assistant you should only be doing this and nothing else unlike unless advised to do so so this is a question about um authority right because uh you've done your leveling off but you wanted to be able to make sure that you're not bypassing the authority of your client and managing email because you know um, I don't let personally I don't let anyone handle my emails um, my personal email because email is always personal but when you have a virtual assistant or for example because just because your number of clients is so overwhelming you can't take it one thing to do is to actually have a duplicate email for all clients so it's not too personal. That's really number one. And then number two is to always set off, level off expectations with your VA that if it's personal, if it's anything else outside from what I'm asking you to do, then don't touch it. Forward it to my personal email. Other than that, the only thing that you can actually do is to reply, delete, and archive. Okay. Now, what are the seven ways to get your inbox under control? and regain your entrepreneurial sanity so more than the one click rule that we were talking about there are many other ways that you can actually do to be able to you know make sure that your inbox is clear it's prioritized and it's not too messy so number one obviously you start with a one click rule but number two you engage the three sentence rule so the three sentence rule is more of like um, just saying the, you know, um, lumping all your responses in three sentences. Do not make it too cluttered. It's like, okay, I'll do that. Um, I will loop you in to this person. Um, I'll get back to you or thanks for responding. You know, um, if you could actually get your reply into the most concise manner possible without putting up an essay writing competition entry in there, that would be really really great and you're smashing it the third thing is to actually unsubscribe from mailing lists now i personally i hate mailing lists um what i did personally was 
I actually set up an email account dedicated for mailing lists. And there are always going to be opportunities in your life that you have to give out your email. And on my case, for example, every time I subscribe to our rewards or every time I would have to go to the contact tracker or contact tracer or actually when I go to coffee shops, you know, you know, that kind of transactions we're in, you're going to be expecting a certain email after and you just don't want it. I would usually give a different email, but I know I could actually read that, but I just know as well that that particular email is dedicated for promotions. So I'm not really itching to like check that as much as possible because I usually use my most important emails if it's high priority. So unsubscribe from mailing lists if it's not important. If you have to subscribe just because you have a subscription on that particular um, company or brand, then make sure that you have a dedicated email for that so it's not going to be cluttered together with all your personal high priority emails and then eliminate yourself from internal email threads so this is kind of like tricky because to a certain extent we always get cc'd on some emails that are not really that important for us so personally you don't feel like why you should be actually there to begin with but you were included to begin with. So um, there's an option for you to actually get yourself out from that particular thread and you could actually explore that within um, Gmail. And then start using a project management system. Now, one of the more most effective and most popular ones is Trello. Trello is actually a great tool to be able to manage your priorities. And in Trello, you can actually have, uh, you can label things like, completed or uncompleted or it's high priority or not priority and it's very color coded so you can actually check that out as your first um, you know like experimental project management system and then you can explore many other project management system after that like there's Asana there is Basecamp there's also um, I think Zapier maybe does have one and then um, well, yeah, there's actually just a lot of project management system to check out and uh, there's monday.com, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but you could actually always start with the basics and Trello is a great one. And then don't use your inbox as a to-do list. So a lot of people actually, they just work by the flow and they just open their emails um, at the start of the day and respond to everything. And... It's been proven by time immemorial that it's just that it just doesn't really work, you know, because we'll always get bothered. And I don't know with you, but for most cases, for all pe working people, you will always encounter long uh, tasks that take longer time to finish. And if that is the case, your email is your number one enemy. Okay, and then lastly is to get your email into the cloud. And what this means is that uh, you have to be able to have a um, backup, you know, of all the data that you're actually sending um, over, uh, like you're sending into the world and it has to have a digital footprint. On my case, I love organizing my emails in a way that I would actually set up one account for every particular department of my life you know so there's an email for blogging there's an email for there, there's a separate email for promotions there's a separate email for um you know first contact for you know that, that's kind of like weird that's very personal as well i have a i have an email for like i, I organize i set up emails based on layers right so if it's completely promotion, like I do not have to be part of that email, uh, I have the third layer email. Like I do not have to check it out. Um, and then if it's important, but I do not have to be, I don't have to have it regularly in my life, I would, I would give the second email. Um, usually the ones that are included in that would be first touch point emails like for example there's this app i regularly use and um it's not i do not receive their promotions but they would usually give me receipts of all my transactions i don't think 
that's high premium enough for me to be to to get to the number one email but it's important enough for me to get receipts and so i would actually put that in the second email but it's very personal you know that's my way of organizing things um i think the entire premise of this entire email handling class or you know session is all about handling one standalone email and um, the last step in there to be able to stay on top of that is to get your email into the cloud and um, really make sure that everything is organized in a way that you understand now additional ninja email cleansing tips for your VA to follow number one use the gmail styling method there are stars in there why, in, why are you not using that so the moment you log into your gmail or any other account there are already embedded features in there the star option allows you to actually prioritize certain emails over the others and go back to them at a later time and see oh these are my stars i need to be able to look into it um, because these are high priority emails and then you have to also utilize labels within Gmail. I was actually browsing through my personal email earlier. I wanted to show you guys how I organize mine by utilizing the labels and naming clients on a different method. But then I realized that it's too personal for me to be able to share my email. So what we're only going to be talking about in this session is very principle, very theory. But I hope you guys still are going to take something off from here. And then um, set up automatic filters so you know you can actually you can actually filter messages based on um, when they arrived when did they arrive when did they uh, what particular keywords will you actually um, want to see you know what 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 those triggers are exactly and then I would really recommend that you guys would also look into the settings tab like in email management, uh, in the settings tab, there are just like there's just like a huge chunk of options to explore in there, like adding signatures or like even you know um, creating um, draft responses on different sorts of emails, like uh, creating canned messages, and also um, setting up auto responders for like for example vacation emails you know those kinds of like power ups that you should actually know um, to be like the email ninja that you wanted to be and then the power to delete at will so you always have the um, the ability to delete but um, you also have to also know that as a VA um, you have to align that with your client um, who gets to have that power to be able to delete things now um, if you think that your client will never benefit from this email because it's it's just pointless then go do so um, but you know always use your judgment but not to filter things to you know um, potentially harm your client because you can also lose opportunities by deleting stuff so you have to be you have to exercise sound judgment here and then questions is equal to content now what i mean by this is that on certain occasions if you're actually handling a client that is big like for example top video advertiser billy jean and his va is managing the content um, va is managing the emails and then Right after Billy Jean talks, someone from the audience asked him via email some questions that they would want to um, ask after the presentation, but they didn't get the chance to do so because the time was limited. Then, you know, turn those questions into content. List down all the questions that are arriving in the inbox most frequently and then tell your client to turn these questions into content, you know? And then you can actually have a new vlog, multimedia, or document, or whatever it is, like a social media post, coming from the questions that actually went into your email. So where can you possibly apply for email handling jobs and get a guide on positioning your service? So the first one here is Prialto. 
So let's go into Prialto and let's look into how this service actually looks like. Okay. So this is Prialto, right? And I also know that Prialto is actually hiring some assistants from the Philippines. So say for example, productivity assistant here, uh, there's an open uh, opening for position. So you guys might also want to check this out. Now, part of the services of Prialto is actually um, email management. And if we look into the, let's just say we want to click on service professionals. Okay, now you can actually see here um, the different services, right? And one of which is scheduling and calendar management. So maximize your time by having your assistant schedule optimal meeting times and keep your calendar free of conflicts. Now they have a full suite of tools that they're using to make their jobs easier. Salesforce, G Suite, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, Expansify. So if you are going to position your services later on, let's say you have a, let's say you're not going to join Prialto, but you wanted to launch your own service line, then you might want to check out how Prialto positioned themselves in terms of like selling their email marketing, what I mean is email management services, and then take some inspiration from it to be able to create yours. Okay. Second example is Zertual.com. Okay, wait, let's go into Zertual and check it out. Okay, let's just um, type it manually. Okay, now when you open Zertual, there's already an option here to become an assistant. So then you can actually just fill up the form and then um, let them actually contact you right now always make sure that you're pulling in your the country where you're situated at we're in the Philippines so just send them out an application and you should be good to go third one would be the one resource.com I'm not sure yeah okay I, I connect I link this correctly So we have one resource, virtual assistants. You also get uh, these services, right? So time management, admin support, finance support, marketing support, sales support, and event and travel support. So this gives you an overview of what most virtual assistants can actually do for a certain business. So yeah, um, I think this is a great resource, in, especially if you wanted to take inspiration on how to actually sell your services. Yeah, I, I would want you guys to actually check this out um, and then look closely into everything that's included here. Especially also you could, uh, uh, you could sign up as well and learn from their processes. Okay, so um, going back here. Now, um, tools that you can use for your email marketing, uh, email management. I keep on saying email marketing because the last class that I've been handling, that I handled was a digital marketing program and we have an email marketing class. So <laughs> I, I, I keep on um, mentioning the wrong thing. Yeah, so uh, I, I included links here to actually uh, for you guys to have something to check out to learn about how Tandem is going to work with Gmail and then you can also use tools like Nimble and then Zapier and see how email management would be, I got that right, email management, how email management would be better off and way, way easier with these tools at hand. Okay, now let's turn into our FAQs about email handling. 
will you be using your email address or will you actually hook up with an email of your own will you be using uh no will you be using their email address like your client or will your client actually hook you up with an email of your own so it depends on most cases of client the clients i've worked with they set up an email for me and so i do not have to have access to the old emails that they have this so i'm only receiving like the future emails um on one case i had this client in Flo in florida i was a retreat retreat company and they actually organize retreats and camps all over the world and um what basically happened was they already have an email that I just needed to organize and I just need to serve things through, be familiar with the process so I know uh, what to do with the incoming emails and also um, fix up all the old ones. And then second question here, will you be replying as your client or for your client? So yeah, um, all these questions actually are um, could be answered in the leveling off part like on most cases I would if if it's email handling you're supposed to be uh, responding on behalf of your client right um, I would say it depends as well on the level of on the level of um, priority here like for most cases I know it's always like answering on behalf but if you're not that usually happens if the person is big like congressman congresswoman or like really top video advertisers or digital marketers or top in the field accountants you know so or like CEOs so you're answering on behalf because not all CEOs would be super hands-on with their emails. But if um, but I wouldn't really discount the fact that some people who you expect to be so busy actually have time to read emails. So it's a case-to-case -case basis and you should be able to have that conversation with your client in the leveling off stage. Um, what tests can I take? Actually, there are several tests available in Upwork. And I'm going to actually give you guys a screenshot, a, a, a screenshot of that in the next slide. Yeah, this is the Upwork readiness test. And once you're done with the readiness test, you can take the email tests after that. So make sure that you create an account in Upwork and then take the email tests after. Although, just a disclaimer, it's been so very competitive in Upwork lately. So there's a big chance that if you're not going to add or offer like really um, something like a unique skill, the chances of getting your profile approved is very slim. Okay. And so let's go to the, actually, that's just it. You know and if you have questions about email management and calendar management um, let me know so I'd be happy to actually um, answer that but for um, calendar management sharing the calendar to someone else like what I've said earlier I wanted to do a demo but I can't because my emails are so personal and so I would want John to actually do that for you um, during the class. So thank you for joining the class and for this small session about email management. And I hope that you guys will be able to apply whatever you've learned from here uh, in, your, in handling not just your clients' emails, but also your own. So see you in the next class.